What's up, you guys? This is Professor Ron with OneHourProfessor.com, and I've said it time and time again, but diversifying your business is the key to its longevity. And I think that this is especially true now because in May of 2020, there was plenty of people that were really negatively impacted by the three death blows or the three kisses of death. So you had the pandemic issue occurring, you had the Amazon commission change that occurred, and you also had a Google algorithm update. So it was a pretty ugly month. So this video explains why it's so important to build your business on multiple different platforms and how to diversify and some of the examples of things that I'm doing with this myself. That being said, let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, so starting out, let's be real, you guys. Online business can be absolutely brutal. It's just a reality of the situation. We had the pandemic, which has impacted some websites kind of positively because a lot of people are at home, but a lot of websites were impacted negatively, including myself, because the traffic to the websites is down compared to usual. We also had Amazon come across with some pretty insensitive, if you will, commission changes that made it so that commissions were way less than they were previously. I personally saw a commission on one of my websites that's really focused on Amazon affiliates. Uh, that uh, revenue had decreased by about 50% for that website, so that hurts. And then lastly, Google comes along and they're like, hey, you guys hurting from the pandemic and from Amazon? Okay, we're gonna big, do a really big algorithm update. And I wasn't really negatively impacted too much by this, a little bit, but not too much. But at the end of the day, I know a lot of people also were hit by this. So it was kind of the perfect storm. And really, online business, this is how it is. It can be really brutal at times, and really only the strong survive. And obviously, the ones who really survive and thrive during times like this are those who click to like my videos and subscribe to my channel. But let's back up for a second. So I always talk about this, but diversification is really how you should build your business. And I have a really interesting example here and some things that I'm going to show you that will probably make you think, wow, that's actually really true. And the company that I'm going to use is Amazon of all companies. Now I know Amazon is what it is today, but you gotta remember that Amazon at one point was just a little itty bitty e-commerce store. And yes, it was in the beginning of the internet days, long, long time ago. But it's really interesting to see the history of what Amazon has done. And in the description below, I actually have a link to a video that's from CNN that kind of shows the timeline and the history of Amazon. And I think that it's important to look at what they've done and understand how they've done it and diversified themselves to where they're this obviously unstoppable behemoth that they are today. Okay, so let's take Amazon as a case study and look at some of the things. So I'm gonna be looking down here a little bit because I wanna make sure I'm reading them as, as we go. So in uh, July, July 5th of 1994, they started with books. They were selling hard copy books and they were doing that online. Crazy concept, right? This is a 94, so it was early on. The, the internet wasn't really big on e-commerce and that's what they started with. They then in 97, in uh, November of 1997, they built out a second distribution facility. So at that time, they only had two different facilities. They had their main one and then they built out a second one to fulfill more orders for books, right? They were still focused on books. Then in 1998, in June of 1998, they expanded to CDs. Anyone remember CDs? I remember CDs. I still like CDs, uh, but I never use them anymore because why would you? Super inconvenient. But the point is, is they had expanded into CDs in 1998. So they had the books, they had the CDs. Things were going, you know, they were rocking for Amazon, right? They were making some money hand over fist just by doing these two things. In uh, September of 99, they launched their third party seller marketplace. So many of us know what this is now, but the Amazon seller marketplace, it didn't even exist until 1999. When they, did, when they did that, it really opened up the business a lot because it allowed other people to sell on their platform and really increase the amount of goods and everything that could be sold. And they handle a lot of the fulfillment just like they do today, really. Uh, so that was in 99. In November of 2002, they started selling clothing. So they partnered with a bunch of different brands, clothing brands, big clothing brands, and they started to sell those as well. And you can notice here, 
as I'm saying these things, they're expanding their product offering. They're getting bigger and bigger. That's what the focus is here. They're diversifying. They started off in books, which that's the thing with any business. You start small, but you start diversifying and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I've done it for my websites. Amazon did it obviously on a much larger scale. So at this point in November 2002, they started selling clothing, got big into that. And then in June of 2003, they launched uh, Amazon Web Services, which is their hosting. That is a multi-billion dollar business at this point. I'm not sure exactly how much it's worth, but worth a lot of money. I didn't check it before the video, uh, but every quarter that brings in billions and billions of dollars. So that's a very large business that they started then. In uh, August 2004, they entered into China. So this is diversification to the point and building out the business to a point to where they are now not just in the US, but they are diversifying into China. So they're bringing in international folks into their platform as well. And they diversified quite a bit from there. The next thing that they did, which was probably probably the biggest thing with you know really succeeding as a company, and I think Jeff Bezos might've done this himself, is that they had liked this video and subscribed to the channel. I had to say it, guys. It was just such an easy setup. But uh, really, so in, in, uh, I would appreciate it if you guys did that as well, obviously. Uh, in February of 2005, Amazon Prime was introduced. Now, we all know Amazon Prime now. We know how it's quick shipping. We all know how great it is. But in 2005, they introduced it. They didn't even have it. So again, they're diversifying. Now they have diversified themselves as a business in products then they diversified geographically and now they are diversifying into even more products within their product offering that they can do so they're diversifying their offerings even further in november of 2007 they introduced the amazon kindle we all know the amazon kindle most of us probably have one that is when it was introduced in 2007 so that wasn't a thing now they're getting into this point to where they are introducing physical products right and technology so they got to that point in 2008 they acquired audible for audiobooks which was obviously a big big acquisition and now if you want audiobooks where do you go you go to audible most of the time there's other platforms but you mostly go to audio or to audible and you get your books there so they did that and then also in 2009, July of 2009, they acquired Zappos. A lot of us know Zappos, or we did know Zappos. They acquired that for their shoe business and their delivery and understanding how they did things and really building that into Amazon infrastructure. So they had done that with Zappos. And then in March of 2012, they acquired Kiva systems for their robotic systems. So this is basically, they're trying to make their warehouses function as well as they possibly can. Robotics can help do that. So then they bought another company, brought in the technology, the understanding, and now they're making their company even more efficient. Again, they're diversifying and getting even bigger and more efficient as they go. Then they went to November 2013, they added Sunday delivery. So they took their current offering, expanded it even better for the people who want to be customers and you know, for Prime and all that makes it a big, big, big thing that other companies just at the time were not doing. Next in August of 2014, they acquired Twitch, which is a streaming service. If you're not familiar with it, it's a place where people go to play video games and other people go to watch them. May not be your thing, it's not my thing, but there's a ton of people. My nephew's here right now, he's doing that that love watching other people play video games. So they acquired that because it worked really well with their hosting services. So they basically had taken that and put them together. And again, they continued to grow their core business by adding products that fit into the complement of what they already have. In November of 2015, they took another foray into the physical product space and they created the Amazon Echo, which we all know as Alexa. I can't say it really loud because there's one right over here. But once they did that, then they got a smart speaker, they got more technology that continued to grow their portfolio and diversify their business. And then in June of 2017, if you recall, I remember the day, they had acquired Whole Foods and they did this in an effort to really focus on grocery delivery. And they've done a lot of other things. They've expanded to other countries and expanded product offerings and created their own generic line and all this. But this is what the article covered, quite frankly, so I don't know the dates of all that. And I know we're not all Amazon, right? We're not all Jeff Bezos. And frankly, they've done a lot of other things as well, right? They're in different countries, they have a generic brand line. We can't all do that. But what we all can do 
is take a lesson from this and understand that you can start really small and then slowly add things over time to get bigger and bigger and bigger. If you wanna just start one small business and grow it to a certain point and then stop, you could do that too. If that suits your lifestyle and you'd rather do that, make an extra couple thousand bucks a month, you could do that. But if you wanna get bigger, you start small and you continually add other businesses, other products, other services, and you grow that core business as time goes on. Again, Amazon started as a website, you guys, just like you and I, it started as a website. Jeff Bezos was a skeevy little dude on his keyboard. That's how it started. And now it's a behemoth. So let's talk about how you can build your business out. So the first thing to understand is that if you're watching this and you haven't started yet, you will never ever have success in this area. You have to start, okay? You have to start. I recommend websites. I'm a big fan of websites. But at the end of the day, you have to start in order to even think about the rest of this stuff. And if you want to start, you can go to the onehourprofessor.com website. I have start a blog in the navigation. Just click that little link. It'll tell you exactly what you need to know about starting a blog. Or if you're not fully ready to start, you can just, if you want to get some inspiration, you can go to the website. I also have income reports. It's a great read for a lot of people that want to understand how you know I've grown over time. I started those years ago, right when I started the website stuff in general. You know, my first month I was negative. So it helps you understand the growth over time and kind of what you can expect. And you can read through those to get some inspiration as well. Or you could just go right to the homepage of One Hour Professor and click to learn the truth about online business because I have a lot there as well. But assuming that you've already started, once you are established and you're getting Google traffic, once you're getting SEO traffic and from the search engines and it's coming in, you can build on to your platform slowly. You can make your business into a real diversified monster. I don't know if you'll be able to become an Amazon necessarily. Maybe, maybe someone watching this becomes the next Jeff Bezos. I don't know. But at the end of the day, you can start building it up. And that starts with different traffic channels and building your business, your online business on multiple platforms. So we all have a website, right? We talk about websites. Okay, great, I have a website. But what can you do? How can you grow up beyond that? First, having a Pinterest presence, right? Social media in general, but Pinterest in particular is a pretty good one. You can build a full-blown portfolio or profile on Pinterest and really build that up to get other traffic to come to your website. So in addition to Pinterest, you can also do YouTube channels to grow your business on that. Now you gotta realize YouTube is a search engine. Google is a search engine. I know that some YouTube channels or some YouTube videos show up on Google, but they aren't the same, you guys. So building your platform like I am right now with One Hour Professor, I'm building my platform with videos on YouTube. And thank you to you guys for liking and subscribing to the videos because it's helping me grow. But also I have my website, which is totally separate on the Google search engine. And I'm growing my platform in two different places, which is really, really beneficial because now I'm diversified into those two different areas. And just like I said with Pinterest, you can also grow a following in Facebook. I feel like years ago that was kind of a better move because Facebook, they really did uh, a number on a lot of businesses when they reduced the reach for pages. But Facebook, you could still use Facebook groups and build a community there. I've done that personally with one of my websites. It's gone incredibly well. I have like 25,000 people in this group. So that can also be a really good way to diversify your brand and to build it even bigger onto another platform. And I'm not as big of a fan on these other ones, but using Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat or TikTok, you can build a platform there and, and well, diversify your platform there to really grow an audience there through the profiles that you create. Like I said, I don't do this personally, but I know that there's other businesses that do, so it's definitely an option. I also wanna say one of the biggest things next is that, and this is probably one of the bigger ones, is that you need to build an email list. So when you build an email list, this is a list of people who follow you. I have my own email list. And this is a list of people who follow me, right? They're interested in me, they're subscribed to the things that I do, and no one can really take that away, right? It's not on a search engine, or it's not on a social media profile. This is something that I entirely own. Granted, it's on an email platform, but I own the information, and I can use that to connect to my own readers and to help them know, you know, help them with different things and everything that I usually do and inform them of the information that I'm putting out. Next, and this one's also important, guys, is that you should like this video and subscribe to the channel. As always, I'd appreciate it if you 
you would. But liking the video makes sure other people can find it. And subscribing to the channel makes sure that you become a part of my community. And I actually answer my YouTube comments. So if you want to comment on anything, let me know. I actually answer those. You can test it out now. But becoming subscribing to the community is a great thing because it helps me build a platform on YouTube, which is what I'm trying to do. But the key with all this is trying focus on when you're creating a business, focus on building a community of people. Don't just think of them as you know profiles or email addresses. Think of building a community of people. And in doing that and just being on these different platforms and really focus on expanding your business onto these different platforms and, and ingraining yourself into these platforms is going to help you make it so that your community of people that you help gets even bigger because now you are addressing them on the platforms that they prefer. And this way too, when you're doing this and you're diversified this way, you're not relying on any one particular platform, okay? There's always gonna be one, right? You're always gonna have your website, but let's say that you have your website and you've grown really well in social media, SEO, and you have a great email list. And let's say SEO goes by the wayside and you're hit and that hurts. You still have the other two and you're really diversified and you're, you've built your brand on different, in different areas to where you're not just reliant on Google anymore. And that's a really big problem for a lot of businesses. Now you can expand and you can use these other platforms to get in touch with your people as well. Doing it this way is also nice too because you can repurpose content and give it to people where they prefer, right? I take my YouTube videos and I put them onto my website, onto the One Hour Professor website. I do that because I'm trying to make sure that wherever people wanna see my content, they can get it. So they can watch my YouTube video, watch everything with it, all the little pop-ups, everything that I talk about on there. Or instead of that, they could just say, you know what, I just wanna read the blog post and they can go to the One Hour Professor website. I've been talking about doing that for some time and now I've done that and it makes sense because again, I'm just sitting there in front of where people want it. If I'm repurposing my content fully, then I'd have a podcast and I'd have all these other platforms. But right now, my business can't sustain that. So I'm on YouTube and I'm also on my website. And also, I will say you can, at a certain point in time, start to acquire other businesses to roll them into your business, just as Amazon, just, just as the examples that I gave you. That can be incredibly helpful and incredibly powerful as well to grow the business beyond your single platform that you have in the beginning. And then after you diversify the platform, obviously diversifying the revenue. I've talked about this so many times, I don't wanna beat a dead horse, but display ads, right? That's a good place for a lot of people to start, but then you get into info products, you get into courses, you get into memberships, you get into drop shipping, you know, and actually drop shipping with other businesses. Don't be scared to create a complimentary physical product. Amazon did it, right? I just talked about all the stuff that they did. You could do the same thing. It's not completely outlandish. A lot of people aren't doing it because it's hard, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. That just means it's hard, and if you do it, you're gonna differentiate yourself from your competitors. So there it is, you guys. Hopefully this makes sense and help you understanding the importance of building your online business with different platforms and on multiple platforms. I've been trying to do this for years. I'm trying to do it even more with my brands that I have to make sure that I build a sustainable business. And not a little niche website, but a true authority website that's diversified both in traffic sources and in revenue sources. If you like this video, I would, as always, appreciate it if you click that little like button to make sure that you like the video itself and subscribe to the channel so that I can grow the community, get it bigger, and diversify my own platform onto YouTube. That'd be amazing. So thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, really appreciate the support. Appreciate you guys being part of the community. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one.